pass again as an obligation. Uh, and uh, the bishop, Catholic bishops of Pennsylvania uh, issued a statement yesterday uh, concerning updates and people's concerns. And it's, uh, it's uh, right. So it's pretty much as said, as previously announced, the, the bishop reinstate the obligation to attend mass in person on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation beginning next Sunday, August 15th, which is, of course, the piece of the assumption. And um, then people keep having questions, what about, what about? And so just stating the normal the way it's been before and the uh, just really the way church law is about this, uh, these are, uh, these are, it does not apply to these people. Does not apply to people who are sick, you know, people who are ill. Okay, it does not apply to people with have a serious health risk. It does not apply to those in a household with those at risk. Uh, it's not does not apply to primary caregivers to those at risk. Uh, it does not apply to people who have serious anxiety concerns about being in a large group setting due to the current situation. For some other reason, you know, physically you're unable to attend mass in person. So those are the reasons. Okay, so as an act of charity, anyone who believes they might have had, might have COVID-19 you know, currently or one of its variants should stay home. Those who are legitimately excused to on from mass on Sundays and holy days are encouraged to spend time in prayer meditating on the death and resurrection of the Lord, reading the sacred scriptures and united themselves to Christ. They are also encouraged to investigate the numerous options to view broadcasts and live streams of Mass, which are continuing across the state. Bishop Persico also said, live stream is not intended for those who can't attend Mass in person. So, you know, if you're sitting home with your cup of coffee and join Live stream, it's time to come to church. <laughs> okay, so uh, those are basically the things we're talking about, keeping all the same policies we had so far. Um, I know that the, I read an email that the priests of the diocese are going to have a meeting, you know, the uh, presbyteral council about all the other, I think all the other details, which we will hear later. But for now, next week we start mass, and next week we start mass for the parish picnic, right? So get ready, make something good for the parish picnic. Our gathering song this evening, number 199, praise to the Lord, number 199, please stand.
Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. We first call to mind our sins. You raised the dead to new life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Grant sinners pardon and peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the bread of life, feeding us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest.
reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed on that day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, reviling must be removed from you along with malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Last 
week's reading? Say, what was last week's reading about? And it was about, you know, leading into this, you know, prior to John, John 6 here. But um, he talked about, remember, um, you know, searching for food that lasts for eternal life. And he uh, said, so you're looking for, you're searching that. And your belly, as you're looking for your belly, you know, you're not looking for heaven, basically. And, uh, you know, it makes me think about, especially when you're out and about with people and you're busy doing this and that. And when you get hungry, you focus on your belly. It's like, oh, it's hard not to, you know, you're even working on a task or something. And you're just like, oh, I'm hungry, <laughs> you know. And for Jesus to say that, you just realize how much you know, we are tied into that. But, you know, again, he's saying that you, you get beyond that. You know, that's not, that's not it. That's, that's, not, that's not the end result. The end result is up there. <laughs> you know, it's the same thing with material life and eternal life. It's uh, material life gets us there. And thank God we can use it. But we're going to keep moving. So today he keeps on to talk more about that. What, what is he talking about? This food that lasts forever. And then he goes on to talk about, you know, more about the, him being the bread of life. And so there's the stages as he goes along here. Um, first one, I am the bread that came down from heaven. So he's specifying, you know, okay, what is this heavenly bread? It's me. I am me, you know, Jesus. I am the bread that came down from heaven. And then, you know, the Jews didn't believe it. You know, said so they murmured. You know, what's the fucking about? We know this is Joseph's son. So, anyways, for yourself too, you know, do you believe that I am the bread that came down from heaven? Okay, then. You know, so these, the Jews didn't believe it, so why should we believe it? So he goes on and says, Whoever believes has eternal life. So, believe in Jesus, right? Believe, believe in him as the bread of life. And, you know, you're going to live forever. That's a pretty good reason. Eternally, not just here, eternally. Okay, then there's the next step. It almost sounds like the same thing, but it's not. The first, this one, the one before was where we believe to have eternal life. Here's the next one. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Okay, so he's talking, the first one, he was talking about belief. Now he's going to eat. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And again, you know, do you believe that? How much do you believe that? How much do you believe in the Holy Communion and the Eucharist in your life? Then he specifies it more. Whoever eats this bread, what is this bread? Then the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. My flesh, the life of the world. Okay, so we're getting more specific. You know, his flesh. Um, what bread that lives forever? He's still kind of talking in thorough, ethereal terms until he gets now. It is my flesh. So, as we move next week to, again, obligation returning to Mass, and I always think, wow, we finally receive Holy Communion, maybe for those that haven't been there yet. And again, he's clarifying saying what it's about. You know, my flesh for the life of the world will live forever. And, um, you know, we all need it. I'm thinking about myself when I was in a nice baby. My, I went to my niece's wedding in, in Michigan, and uh, I always, you know, I take, take my little mask kit, so I have a mask with me at times. And, you know, when there's, you know, if I, I don't have Holy Communion, you know, I miss it. And, uh, um, and uh, you know, even when I, you know, even though in hotel rooms, like to have communion is special for me. And uh, um, so, for ourselves, you know, for you, for how much does this mean to you? And how much do you believe that the first part was about it, about, you know, Jesus being a bread from heaven? And how much does it mean to you in your personal life? And you know, what has been missing? Maybe something hasn't been quite going the same. You know, the COVID thing has really changed us in many ways, but you know, you think maybe oh, I'm okay. But if you're not going to keep communion, you're not okay. And he says it right here. And um, so, Get excited about next week. 
before we came in. And wow. And so we pray that, you know, the whole church of the United States will continue to have this passion for Jesus, the bread that came down from heaven. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God, and God, light from light, true God, true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial to the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and our salvation.
us in Christ, we pray. Yes. For any special intentions you wish to voice at this time. We pray. Hear us. Lord, in you in whom we live and have our very being, help us place a deeper trust in you, knowing you are there with us. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Lord, we pray for every evil, graciously grant peace. 
increase in our days. By the help of your mercy, always we may be free from sin and safe from all distress. We give the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of the power, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus be with all of you. Amen. We offer a sign of peace.
let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we said, uh, next week there will be the parish kiss and picnic. And so, yes, we'll have the Saturday evening mass, but the, uh, the actual picnic is likely to come uh, at uh, 11 o'clock on, on Sunday and bring some food. And, and uh, uh, even if you come Saturday night, please come to the picnic. And it'll be wonderful. And um, okay, so that's that. And bring a dish to share, right? We've got to have some good food, free food. <laughs> okay, uh, good time to begin. It's a feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In case of Pilgrim Clement Wender, I um, will use a call Paul, so keep it going no matter what, what's going on. Okay, uh, and as we said, the, the, the obligation to attend Mass has to begin next weekend. And uh, finally, uh, the, we have our new awnings, our new awnings uh, in the church, if you notice there, they're also in front of the rectory, and that's fantastic, and uh, it's what uh, we uh, were able to do that through the, uh, come on, the, uh, the uh, CSA uh, from uh, year or so ago, last year's CSA, and we finally got it happening, so that's fantastic, and we can, you know, your contributions, thank you, help very much, thanks. And then also, the 50-50 raffle that we've been selling, you know, they have those wonderful, we're down to uh, 75 bad tickets or, or less, and, uh, you know, we, you get a good chance to win once we get those sold, so uh, uh, thank you so much, and we're also grateful that uh, Sister Judith Liberosi is here, she can our sister, our one sister that's religious, that's from St. Mark Church, we're so glad to have her here, so thank you so much for having me here. <laughs> the Lord be with you. We sought blessings upon you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thousand reasons. 